Well, here we are, folks, back with Part 7. And you might remember that in Part 6, we started looking at uh, government interventions that and how they affect the market. And we looked at the price ceiling, or I'm sorry, the price floor, where uh, you could not lower the price below that level. You had to charge at least that level, and it was above the equilibrium level. Now we're going to look at the opposite situation. Okay? And here we're going to be looking at a price ceiling. Okay? And the idea behind the ceiling is that the, cust the uh, uh, system or the price control is there to help the consumer to provide them with the lowest possible price. Where in the, uh, the situation we were talking about in uh, part six, that was designed to help the supplier. So, with that said, always we start at equilibrium. And now what the government does is it sets a price control below the equilibrium level. And we're going to take a quick look and see what happens in that situation. Okay. So, uh, we find that the suppliers in red, okay, the red supply curve, at that uh, price controlled level or price ceiling of $3 uh, are only willing to supply 4 million pounds of coffee. Okay. Now, we look at the demand side of that and consumers at a price of three dollars a pound want to demand or want to consume eight million pounds of coffee but the suppliers are only willing to provide four million okay? so we have a difference okay? and that difference in this situation is four million pounds of coffee and what that is is a shortage where people are demanding coffee at that price but the suppliers are not supplying it now, an example that appears in our textbook deals with rent-controlled apartments in New York, okay, and where the uh, government has set a rent level that the landlords cannot charge above that rent level, and that rent level is significantly below the equilibrium level that the free market would establish for rents of equivalent uh, rental units in the New York City area. So what we find is the landlords are only willing to supply very few rental units at that rent controlled price and the consumers, the people who want to rent apartments, uh, there are a lot of consumers that want to rent apartments and so therefore there is a shortage of rent controlled apartments available to be rented. Now a lot of things happen when the market is interfered with like this. One of the situations that can occur is what would be referred to as a black market or illegal market, where basically the landlords would be charging more rent than they were supposed to because they could find people that would pay that higher rent. Okay? And there would be uh, consumers who would be willing to pay a little bit more under the table to get one of those rent-controlled apartments. Okay? And so therefore there could be black market operations it would be totally illegal. So again, the cause is the government interfering with the uh, free market operation. And why would the government set such a rule? Okay. Probably because it pleases a large number of voters, okay, mainly the consumers of rent controlled apartments, okay, and therefore and the people that already are in rent control departments and they will vote for that group of government officials and therefore those government officials can keep their jobs so uh, so understand that a rent ceiling is the very most that can be charged for an item okay, or for a service and it results in a severe shortage which was the opposite of what we had when we had the price floor the price floor remember resulted in a severe surplus. Okay. We'll continue our discussion of supply and demand in part eight. Thank you.